Hi, this is Tom Jacobs from 2djacobs.com and also healingsuicide.com. I'm an evolutionary astrologer, energy worker, channel, medium, do all kinds of interesting things, interesting to me, uh, at both of those sites. Uh, my main site is tdjacobs.com. So some of you have uh, heard some of these teachings before I'm going to get into. Uh, the video title, of course, is called Stop Cutting Cords. And what I want to do is um, share with you a little insight about the model of soul that I work with and on and teach and then help you understand how when you're talking about relationship issues, the end of a relationship that needs to occur now or cleaning up boundaries and present relationships you want to continue or when it's hard to go of somebody from the past, sometimes, I mean, most people will tell you, you need to cut cords. And um, I just want to give you a different perspective on this and then encourage you to check out um, a tool that, that I channeled some years ago to help with this. Uh, but the first, the first idea is I want you to think about everybody in your life is there because everyone who has an impact, who has an important influence on you, is there to help you learn how to be human, to help you learn about who you are and who you're not, who you're willing to be, who you're not willing to be what you're willing to participate in with other people and what you aren't. So consider that a soul is divine consciousness that exists outside time. And then it kind of erupts into space time and lives life as you, you know, birth, maturity, you know, and on. And you need other people, other souls living human lives to show you who you are essentially to to help you evolve into saying yes please when you mean it being assertive asserting your divine will ultimately to create self-respect saying no thank you when you mean it also to assert divine will to create self-respect sometimes in this model we think about a human as the center of his or her own universe magnetizing attracting, constellating all other people who have an impact on that person because of the lessons needed to be learned. Well, consider that the lesson, the lessons, the sets of lessons that any soul or every soul has for its human selves, including you and me, the overarching point of this human life is to learn to become the source of validation for the self. Elsewhere, I'll, I'll often say, become the source of love for the self. Acknowledgement, validation, recognition, acceptance, compassion, love. So that's the mission statement every soul has for every one of its human lives spread out all across the human timeline. So that's the, that's the theme or the thesis. And then your relationships with people are meant to help you see how to respect yourself more, how to learn how to say yes when you mean it, no thank you when you mean it, how to learn to cultivate self-respect and figure out and then assert what I am willing to experience and do and offer and be part of and what I am not willing to experience, do and be part of. What I am willing to give, what I can afford to give, what I'm not willing to receive, how I do want to be treated, how I don't want to be treated. How can I treat you better? I learned through interacting with you. How can you treat me better? How can we both learn about love, which is the ultimate wisdom and power of the soul? It already knows it's loving, but you were born here and forgot your true nature. So how can you go from fear into love? So one way of looking at the thesis is you are here to learn to become the source of love and validation and acceptance for yourself. And then along the way, you put yourself in situations and you'll co-create scenarios with others that put you into things that are not loving so you can learn to become loving. So those two theses or those two umbrella things. So then other people are in your life to show you how to become more self-respecting. One of the things that happens quite often is you attract others to do two things. And this is, you know, there are two kinds of relationships in your life. 
past and present and future. One kind helps you see something about yourself and own it. The other category may help you see something about yourself and stop it. <laughs> like own and embrace or own and release and get rid of and shed. So you need a variety of relationships with humans over the course of decades to show you things about yourself you can't see, to say to you, oh, you do this thing. Do you want to own that and embrace it or shed it? You want to carry it forward or get rid of it? Okay, so that's the setup here. Then when you need to separate from a relationship, you have deep ties or there's been energy that's been exchanged or one person may feel he or she owes the other person something. You know, all these complexities, all these layers of complexities within dynamics. Maybe you were in pain and I tried to be there for you and I felt part of me went out to you, my heart went out to you or something. Maybe I inadvertently carried something, okay, or vice versa. Maybe you have a strong personality and I absorbed your energy because I orbited you or I fell into your shadow because you're bright and you shine brightly or you're loud or something. So when we get to the place where we need to end a relationship or wrap up one that ended in the past and people are telling us to cut cords, I want you to stop cutting cords because it's not honor that the soul's agreements or contracts are based in love and mutual support. So let's say that you have a soul contract with somebody and that contract centers on the theme of you need to realize how you don't want to be treated or how you're not willing to be treated. Well, what's gonna happen? <clears throat> you're gonna attract somebody <clears throat> who's gonna treat you in a way that you have to say no to or don't treat me that way. That soul is helping you. That you deserve disrespect, not that you deserve abuse or difficult treatment or being forced into something, not that at all. But that other soul is performing a service for your soul, even as the human dynamics can be really difficult. And the same with a controlling parent or an indifferent parent or somebody who who abandoned you or somebody who um, uh, stole from you or cheated on you or lied to you or you opened your heart to and that person disrespected you and it really hurt all of the really impactful important relationships you have fit this model of one soul is helping the other soul and vice versa but learn what it needs to learn so let's say you have in your past a relationship with someone who treated you in a way that didn't feel good and really hurt you well, now you might come in with this attitude of, I gotta get that person out of my space, cut the cords and never think about that person again and you know, do all this stuff. First, that energy is fear-based and doesn't acknowledge that that soul has helped you become stronger, have become wiser, more knowledgeable about what you will not experience and then have you step up and say, no, I'm not going to experience that. So if you say, I got to get this person out of my space, it's fear. It won't work. So one thing that I teach is to give back energy and call back energy or get rid of another person's energy down into the earth. The earth will accept it. The earth is your mother spiritually. As long as you're in this planet embodied, she will help you. Don't worry about sending something that seems negative to her. She can transmute it. You can't harm the earth just like you can't harm your soul. Um, and call back to what belongs to you. And if you feel, so to speak, stuck with someone's energy in your space and you approach it like you have to fight, you push yourself further and further away from the loving vibration that can actually resolve the situation. Love is the answer, but love doesn't always mean well, love doesn't ever mean being a pushover, but love doesn't always mean being soft. Sometimes self-respect means becoming stronger in a way that kind of hardens your resolve, which may not look like love, but it's self-respect, so it is love. If you 
you want a tool to help with this, the release course I'm linking to in the description is what motivated me to do this video. I did this, I channeled this course years ago from Hermes, St. Germain, Thoth, Jehudi, Merlin, that being, I channel an Ascended Master. Uh, most people have heard of Hermes, Thoth, St. Germain, and he calls, it calls itself Jehudi through me, the uh, kind of a, an anglicized chem name. Anyway, Jehudi. D-J-E-H-U-T-Y is how I spell it, how he spells it through me. But anyway, this idea is like, you cannot resolve and get rid of energy in a healthy way if you're angry or fearful or defensive. How can you come to love the effect somebody else has had on you, even if it was painful? How can you transform that? So I just want, so check out that course. It's a home study course with some channel meditations and a channel text from Jehudi about all this stuff. But I just want to really want to put your attention on the vibrations. I want you to put your attention on your vibration when you are resolving old relationship issues or needing to clear something up from the past, check your vibration. If you feel hatred, it comes from anger, which comes from pain. If you feel resentment, it comes from anger that comes from pain. If you feel not safe, there's fear, which is, an, which is evidence that you've been hurt. So how can you become empowered to own for yourself self-respecting choices so that you fill in the gaps or spackle in the cracks or whatever so that you no longer attract people who show you you need to respect yourself more? How can you move into a loving vibration? And the first step is to monitor the vibrations that you're feeling. I have a billion examples of my own life, but I'll just, I'll just mention two. It's two women I used to be involved with uh, some years apart, some years ago. And part of me feels unresolved which, with each of them because of communication and just, you know, not being able to resolve things as far as I'm concerned. And um, when I tune in in a most centered, grounded channeling space, I feel connections to them. And part of me then, will, of course, will come up with fear and say, no, I want to get rid of that. That doesn't work. Cut cords, but if your souls are connected, the cutting cords will not work. You have to get to the place where you love the effect, the lesson, the growth that person had on you. So when that comes up, I need to love that each of those persons taught me something, taught me something. When I get there, the connection will dissipate some. But if I'm resistant to the fact that our souls are connected, that we have contracts together, that's not love. And the category of not love keeps us in the space of not loving. So anyway, check out the release course and uh, check out your own vibration. If you can, it's not just forgive, but if you can forgive in a way that helps you move on, that's what the course is meant to do then you can be free of a lot of old vibrations and learn how to clean up existing relationships and ease out of existing ones that need to go. So check that out on the healing courses page at tdjacobs.com. Thanks for your time and energy and uh, hope your February is going well. Goodbye.